Welcome to the Love Lab Podcast, a safe place to get real about sex. Whether you're man, woman, single or couple, this is the show for you. Because, well, sex matters. We are your hosts, Kevin Anthony and Céline Rémy. All right, welcome back to the Love Lab Podcast. This is episode 7. And the subject for today's episode is a beginner's guide to prostate massage. Oh, I have to say I'm super excited about it. When we were talking about it, I couldn't wait to be able to share some of the wisdom. And Kevin was kind of like, I don't know, like, I don't know what I can add to it. And so granted, you know, he's never given a prostate massage but he's received plenty. So I'm really going to use him and his personal experience to enlighten enlighten us all. (laughs) (laughs) Well, if you've been listening to the Love Lab podcast, you may have noticed that our intro alternates between my voice and Celine's voice. And it's so appropriate that it just so happens that this week's episode has Celine's voice because this is an area that is totally her expertise. (laughs) you know, yeah, I've received. That's, that, that's what I can say. So um, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be educational. If you're a woman, do not tune out because there's a lot of valuable material in here for you as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, uh, this is a subject that probably makes, well, I was going to say most men, but probably makes both men and women a little uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it, is an important subject, especially as men get older. So I think that there's going to be a lot of really valuable content here. So everybody sit tight wherever you are in your car. Not sit tight, sit loose. (laughs) (laughs) It's better for prostate massage. (laughs) In either case, keep listening because you're bound to get some good information. So today the goal is that we want to give you some how-tos and just kind of like make you feel more at ease with prostate play because just like what Kevin was saying, for most guys at the mention of prostate massage, all they remember is the checkup at their doctor and um, that's usually is not the most memorable experience. (laughs) And, you know, some women may not even really be aware of it or... I don't know how to do it. And so we want to give you the keys. We want to we want to demystify it. We want to make it easy and simple for you to start to take your love life to the next level. And I think that prostate um, understanding of the prostate is so key because there's an increasing number of men that over 50 that suffer from enlarged prostates. And when men have enlarged prostates, it actually has a lot of side effects. It can cause erection problems. It can cause ejaculation problems and painful urination or like having to pee at all times during the night. And that's never comfortable. Yeah, there are a lot of um, potential complications to having an, an enlarged prostate. And, you know, when we, when we teach our other courses, our um, Power Up Your Erections and uh, Master Your Ejaculation courses, what we're really doing in those courses is trying to teach men how to um, be healthy enough so that their body works the way that it should. And, of course, we teach you some, some strategies and techniques and things to help that along. But the reason why I mention that now is because this is one of those sort of essential things to being healthy and having your body work the way it should, mm-hmm. especially as men get older. You know, in our modern lifestyles today, we spend a lot of time sitting on our asses, mm-hmm. literally, either sitting on our ass in traffic or sitting on our ass at a desk. Most men spend a lot of time sitting on their butt. When you add the, into that lack of exercise, also poor diet, high stress levels, all of these things are contributing to create prostate problems, which then, of course, contributes to erection problems and ejaculation problems and all these other things. So Mm -hmm. if you really want to master your sexuality and your body as a man, this is an area you don't want to overlook. Exactly. Actually, uh, some of the numbers, which are pretty scary, but it said that prostate cancer is not the leading cancer diagnosed among men in the U.S. Wow. 
I know that's that's really scary, and you know there's a big controversy around uh, some of the testing that's being done on the markers around prostate, and there's a whole book that's been written on that on the hawks of uh, of these tests, and we're not going to really dive into this rabbit hole, but I also want to mention that. Don't always just take the very first diagnosis you're getting because some of the tests and markers are not proven to be super reliable. You want to have two or three different opinions. And if you do have a healthy lifestyle and incorporating prostate massage can make a big difference. When I was researching some data for this particular show today, I wanted to see if there was any medical studies that had been done on a correlation between prostate massage and prostate health. And I could not find anything on that. But what I did find, however, is that even though there's not like anything saying, hey, this works for that, there are several doctors that do recommend prostate massage as a healthy routine to do for yourself or to do on your loved one, just again, to maintain prostate health. And so like Kevin is saying, I think it's it's an important part of the body to incorporate and to to bring into your routine. Right. And, you know, we're not a medical program here. So, of course, you know, go to your doctor, follow your doctor's advice. We have to say that. And our show is about sex. Mm-hmm. And for men, this really affects your sex life. So it really it's does. appropriate to talk about. It does. So one thing that... I know, and I'm very curious to to hear about your experience, Kevin, but I'm just going to share that too, is that prostate massage, what I've noticed is that it really helps to release excess tension and freeze your sexual energy. And I had really good results working with men that have erections problem and AED in simply kind of like releasing this deep-seated tension, getting the blood flow going, and it somehow seems sometimes to unlock a new door uh, and can really support the erection process. So that's a pretty cool side effect there. I'm, of course, not the best test case for this particular um, thing because I don't tend to hold tension in my anus. Mm -hmm. My tension goes all into my shoulders and in the (laughs) back of my neck. And so, you know, Selena will often say, oh, wow, you're really relaxed, you know. (laughs) It's it's just not where I happen to hold tension. (laughs) But you do like, we... Since we've been together, um, we've kind of made the prostate massage a regular thing for you. And the way that we do it is that we make it most of the time its own special thing. So we don't try to, to incorporate it into something else and because sometimes it gets a little complicated to get all the logistics going. And what I really like to do is to set a proper time where I get to give you a prostate massage and you have nothing else. You don't have to give back. You don't have... To to do anything but receive. And I like to create that container because it's really all about you at that moment and about like your health and your pleasure, of course. <laughs> and it's something that you really have started to look forward to. And we like to do it about, I don't know, Ideally, I'd say like once a month or twice a month, and we don't always get there. If I wait longer and it's been like six or eight weeks and you're like, hey, I haven't had a prostate massage in a while, I've noticed that you do crave it or I don't know if craving is the right word, but you do look forward to it. Well, I do find it extremely relaxing. Mm -hmm. And the way that you administer, and you can talk more about that uh, a little bit later in the show, But it is actually really an opportunity for me to just completely let go, relax, and receive. And, you know, I have multiple business projects that I work on every day, and we're like, go, go, go. We're in the office, like, getting stuff done, and and I really don't have very many opportunities to just completely relax and let go. So that's that's one of the things that I really appreciate about it, it's just that, that opportunity to just be like... I'm just going to lay here and receive. And now for me, because I tend to be relatively open, it's, it's a pleasurable experience. Um, you know, if you're a guy who has an, a large prostate or you tend to carry a lot of tension, it might not be the most relaxing and pleasurable experience at first. Mm-hmm. But with continued um, use of the, of the 
uh, prostate massage. It probably will be. In fact, it will be at some point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what I've noticed really is that there's three ways that the prostate massage can go. And by the way, the prostate prostate has also been called the male G-spot because there's a lot of similarities uh, between a female G-spot and, and the men prostate in how it reacts. And something that's fascinating is that what I've noticed can be the first, it well, it can be painful, but usually it's only painful because you're going too quickly, because... Um, I don't know, you're not using enough lube or you're super tight and we're like, you're pushing through the sphincters and it's like, okay, it doesn't work. And we'll go more into, I want to give the how to's in, in uh, afterward too, but let's just stick with the sensation. And um, for some women to pleasure like G-spot stimulation, G-area of vaginal massage like that can also be having a lot of pain if she has a lot of tension. So there's a correlation there. The second sensation that can be is kind of a numbness, where it's kind of blah. We're like, well, nothing is happening. It's neither pleasurable. It's neither uncomfortable. Uh, could it be a little bit weird because that's just something that you're not used to. And so that when it's dormant like that, it requires more than one prostate massage for it to start to awaken. And then the third sensation is off the charts, where it's like, oh my God. Why did I wait so long to get that? <laughs> <laughs> and like Kevin said, it sometimes takes a little while to get there before you get to that place of, oh my God, this is so pleasurable. I want to get into how to do it now that we're starting to talk about this. So the prostate is basically a glance that is... <sighs> the, the quickest access to reach it is through the anus because it shares kind of a wall. And um, you can stimulate the prostate from the outside by pressing on the perineum area, basically between the scrotum and the anus, and you can reach the prostate. But it's definitely not as, um, as intense. Yeah, I find when, when trying to do it externally, you have to push so hard to try to, mm -hmm. to try to really put enough pressure on it, mm -hmm. that it's actually uncomfortable. Mm, okay. Yeah. So that's, that's not what we want. So the best way is through the anus. And so you have to understand that there's sphincters on the anus and there's some that are voluntary and some that are involuntary, which means that there's the one that you are clamping on, you know, the expression tight ass, that's where it comes from. <laughs> And that's kind of like that first ring. And so if you are being really scared about it or, um, yeah, have apprehension or anything like that, that's the one that you have control over and that you need to start to focus on relaxing that, that, that door, basically. And guys, if somebody penetrates you in the ass, it does not make you gay. And think of it this way. This mm -hmm. is, this is whether it's pleasurable or not pleasurable, this is really about your health mm -hmm. and the function of your body. So would you rather have a partner helping you with this or would you rather end up in a hospital where they're sticking all sorts of things you don't want <laughs> up your ass? <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll take option A. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, and so... The second sphincter is more involuntary, so it can take a little while for it to start to relax. It's not in your control, and that's why in the process of the prostate massage, slowing down is essential. I like to have a lot of time that's set up aside because you don't want to rush that process. And basically, when, let's say, the receiver is laying on their back and you are inserting a finger inside their rectum, you go about two knuckles deep. That's about where the prostate is. And then you press up towards um, the pubic bone, towards his, his cock, basically. And that's where you fill the prostate. It's, you know, I've done thousands of prostate massage at, by this, at this time. And... I have to say that it's not always easy to find it and some, it can feel different. But sometimes you'll feel like the best way that I can describe it, it's kind of like a little, a pee, like a round thing where you're like, oh, this feels different. 
or it could be ridges, but it's not the same type of ridges as when you are inside um, a woman's and you feel that whole... Um, your reference sponge or, or like G-spot area. Um, but there is something that's different. And when somebody has a prostate that's healthy, you, you feel it underneath your finger pad and there's, there's, there's something there that's a little bit different and that's responsive, but it's neither too hard or too like, uh, I don't know if loose is the term, but like really like like there's that this I'm, I'm making these these hand movement of like being like totally like relaxed and there's no tone there too um and of course you know in order to be really sure about at the state of your prostate go to a, a practitioner that is a, a doctor that is trained in this and can give you a good feedback on how your prostate feel but usually um just being able to feel it on your own with your own finger or with your partner's finger that's basically it the logistic of how you do a prostate massage. I see Kevin nodding here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, I've never given one, so I don't really have anything to add there. Just trust Celine. She's been working with both men and women for many, many years. And so <laughs> if she tells you one is like the other or this is what it's like, you should trust her. <laughs> so I'm going to give you kind of like of the four steps here to giving a really good prostate massage. First thing you want to do is for both to be in a comfortable position. The position that I have found works the best for the person receiving, well, actually there's two, to be honest. One is laying on your back and then you can engage with the person giving and look into each other's eyes. And that's one way to um, to make it easy and have a connection and, and yeah, be engaged. The second position would actually be with uh, the receiver laying on their belly. And that is good for somebody who might feel a little embarrassed or uncomfortable and be like, I can't face you while you're doing this. I just want to be face down on a massage table and be in my own world. Um, and so that's another way to do it. When you do it, then uh, always remember you are going towards his cock. If he's laying on his um on his belly, that means that with your finger, you're pointing down. Okay, so just kind of to giving you that uh, uh, visual here. And another option with a prostate massage would be to be on the side. And if you're laying on your side, that's most likely when you do it on yourself because it's the easiest way probably to reach with your fingers up your ass in a way that, uh, that makes sense with your body. So comfortable position is number one. And then you want to use a lot of lube. And lube is key because your anus does not self-lubricate. So you, you can never use too much lube, in my opinion. And anything from coconut oil to specifically designed lubes for prostate play, anal pleasure will work. It depends on your preferences, on what you like to have inside your body, on whether or not you are using a toy or a tool to do the prostate massage. So lube is essential. I personally love to use gloves. And even when I work on my men, I will use gloves. And the reason why is because, well, there's bacteria that could be transferred from fingers to the anus, from the anus to the finger. And I feel much more at ease with gloves, um, especially it takes away all of those fears of like, oh my God, what if there's poop or what if it's not clean? There's a lot of stuff around that because when you use a glove, it's like, it doesn't matter. Uh, you just remove the glove when you're done. You don't have to look at it and everything stays very hygienic. And, um, also, there's no more like scraping with fingernails. So I like the fact that the gloves allow for an easy penetration and no scraping. And even if I do it on myself, I will tend to use a glove for a prostate. Well, I don't have a prostate, but for anal play. <laughs> <laughs> You keep looking for your prostate. You haven't found it yet. <laughs> <laughs> and as a side note, anal massage is essential for both men and women because we do hold a lot of tension that's a place of our bodies that does not get massaged and um kevin and i have a little ritual that we like to do do you want to <laughs> want to share what, it what ritual are you talking about <laughs> 
I have no idea. A shower ritual. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Celine, Celine likes to uh, loosen things up uh, in the shower pretty much every morning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we like to shower together and uh, we like to use soap. And you know when you soap the outside and then you just soap inside the anus and just do a little visit there and relaxation. You know, some of you might be thinking, what the heck? <laughs> But it is a really good way to check, like, um, and if Kevin's not showering with me and I'm by myself, I will do it and I can check, okay, I'm really tensed. That gives, it's kind of the barometer for me to know where's my stress level at. <laughs> <laughs> and I can be like, okay, now I can, um, I can do a little bit more massage. And so that's one way to, um, to do a quick little check, um, uh, without going too much in depth, but just to be like, okay, I'm checking it. I'm loosening it because you're using your soap. Uh, you can even just rotate. I like to stretch my anus a little bit and, uh, that allows me to relax very nicely. First thing in the morning. <laughs> sure, you can make it part of your morning routine. Why not? <laughs> so the second, uh, the sorry, the third step really. So we know about the comfortable position. And comfortable position needs also to be for the giver. Because if you are in a position that's uncomfortable and you're giving a massage, the, the other person will feel it as well. And, and the, the discomfort could be transferred through the finger. So it's really important to prep yourself. And uh, make it comfortable for both giver and receiver. You know about using tons of lube and have lube right next to you using gloves for easy uh, sliding operations. And then you have to understand that it's a slow process. You cannot rush those things. And using a finger, what I like to do is to put a finger at the entrance so it's massage the butt cheeks, play with the butthole, do some stretching of the of the cheek of like, uh, I like to say like ringing the bell, but just press on the anus and relax. This feels really good. You have to give your anus a little foreplay. <laughs> you can't just rush right in there. So once you are there and you've done that foreplay, I like to place my finger at the entrance and have my partner bend their legs um, so that if they're laying on their back, their legs are bent. It makes it easier for that insertion of the finger. And then I like to have that person breathe and literally kind of like breathe around their finger that's pressing, around the finger that's pressing around their anus and imagine that they are breathing my finger in. And I go really slowly there. Um, I don't push. It's like if I feel like it's open, I go, even if it's like a millimeter there, like tiny bits at a time until you're slowly going all the way in. And then what's awesome about what you're in is to just kind of like take the temperature and be like keeping the finger inside. There's just no like in and out motion there. It's not like, this is like I have my finger inside, I leave it in there, my finger pad feels and you just then breathe. Let's say you are two knuckles deep, you're feeling the prostate. Kevin, do you feel it, the, a difference in the penetration when you are in the rectum and, and then once it's like starting to touch the prostate and feel the prostate, do you feel a different sensation there? Yeah, when you when you first penetrate, you don't feel the pressure on the prostate itself. Mm -hmm. And then when you, when you move the finger up, then you can feel a little bit of pressure directly on the prostate. Mm -hmm. So So you'll know that that you know the person is on the prostate when you feel it differently mm -hmm. i've noticed too that when i press on the prostate often there's like a a correlation too with the with the cock where it will kind of like lift the penis um so that's another way like it can sometimes trigger you to squeeze the muscle that, mm -hmm. that moves your penis up and down yeah mm -hmm. yeah so also in terms of sensations and pleasure for some men they'll get a really really strong erection with um, anal penetration and prostate massage and for others it kind of becomes so overwhelming that it kind of takes away and that they don't get an erection so it's a normal thing that it could go either way yeah as we also teach in our other courses is that um, relaxation is the key to erections mm -hmm. so in this process, if you're really relaxed, you will most likely have an erection and that's totally normal. And mm -hmm. that's actually to be expected. Mm -hmm. Now, if it doesn't happen, don't feel bad about it. But yeah, it could be that 
you know, maybe you have too much going on in your head about what's happening. And, you know, once you get too much in your head, erections tend to go down. (laughs) (laughs) If your focus goes up into your head, your erection goes down. That's that's a general (laughs) correlation. (laughs) You can take that one into the rest of your lovemaking too. Don't get too into your head. (laughs) So what I love about this, so so you guys can talk about like, okay, it feels like you're on my prostate. You can give the giver a feedback like, okay, I think you are at the spot. And then I like to do little motions like a, that's like pressing up and down, just kind of like a, a again, I say ringing the bell with, with the padding up and down. And if there's enough lube, I also like to go to the sides and do some good like stretches because there's ligaments, there's deep muscles that insert also in the glutes that are all connected with your glutes, with your lower back. And, um, oh my gosh, do you remember that time you had massive lower back pain? And I was like, okay, let's give you a prostate massage. And it totally like basically cleared it. Yeah relaxation (laughs) (laughs) yeah but it's like also i think like i remember there was one side that was more tensed and so i was also working on the walls of the anus on the side having you breathe and relax and massaging it and then it kind of like opened up things and you're like wow like everything else feels more loose and within a day you were fixed it was better than your chiropractor I'm not saying you shouldn't go to your chiropractor, but that's something you could try too. My chiropractor might be listening to this, so just know you're doing an awesome job. <laughs> <laughs> and then what I love to do then, um, so then you're inside, you're doing this prostate massage and it's something slow, it's gentle pressure, you can do it deeper or not, but then it's to start to include the cock with it because for most men, it will feel highly, highly pleasurable to incorporate Incorporate the prostate and the cock massage. So, granted, this is why uh, on your back is the best position because the giver can be seated between your legs with one finger up inside your anus, and then the other hand can be stroking and massaging the penis for amazing sensations there. <laughs> well, that's one of the one of the beautiful parts about uh, doing this as a, as a couple or as a partnership is that it's not strictly just. A medical procedure at mm-hmm. that point, right? So you can do things that you know somebody wouldn't do in a more clinical setting, mm-hmm. and especially if you have a little bit of discomfort in the process, um, adding that genital stimulation can make the entire experience yes. much more pleasurable. Exactly, because we're linking that pleasure, and it's kind of like bringing in pleasure, and then the pain disappears, and we're like, yeah, we're repatterning, which is a really big thing of the things that I love to do. That repatterning, bringing in pleasure rather than focusing on the pain. Um, And then what we love to do is definitely what I call surfing waves. That means that we're not going for the first sensations. We're going close to the edge, going back down, making this a whole experience. And then once you are inside, you will feel either... I really feel a lot of heat that can come once once it's, it feels like it's really hot on your finger and then you know that's kind of starting to be enough or you can also feel a pulse that starts like and like you feel it, it it's, it's alive it had it and it could be anywhere from like 10 minutes 20 minutes and then you're like okay it feels like I'm complete and when you slowly pull out your finger listen like slowly pull out the finger that's the key here we're not just like going boom really quickly we're slowly removing it or you can massage it with the intention of like milking the prostate with going for an ejaculation and if you have your finger inside while the person is ejaculating you literally will feel the prostate contracting and pulsing it's a fantastic it's a phenomenal experience to feel that so that's how you know you were at the right place because the prostate contracts into the ejaculation that's how it it pushes it into the vast difference and 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 onto the outside so you really feel it um and i know when you do that kevin for you that that ejaculation with the prostate that's that's being massaged you feel like it's a massive like emptying and release for you right it, for sure, yeah, yeah. It's it's uh, it increases the sensation of the ejaculation, and it does feel like a pretty big. It feels like a it's like cleaning every all the pipes out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's that's kind of like the how to to give it to your partner. And I want to say to do it on yourself. If you're like, okay, I don't have a partner, and I want to use something, I would say use 
a toy specifically designed for prostate massage, like a prostate massager. Uh, we like to recommend the Aneros, and uh, they have lots of different models. You don't need the fancy gadget vibrating and all of that. The simple starting, like the Helix is a good one, or just like a starter one. And those massagers are designed specifically to go right onto your prostate and they also have a little uh, hoop, a loop that can press on the perineum. So you get not only the internal stimulation, but also pressing onto the perineum, which is pretty cool. And the same rule apply when you use the toy, that you use plenty of lube, that you go slow and that you explore. And then what's cool with that is when you do this and you're reclining on your back, you're inserting the toy inside, then uh, you are pushing towards your pubic bone and then there's that pressure. You can literally rock your pelvis to kind of move the toy and then you become hand free and you can play with your hands and massage your cock and have this full body experience and uh, expand like new pleasure sensations. All right. Well, there you have it. (laughs) That's all the time we have for this episode. So now it's time to get up off your ass (laughs) and go do something else. (laughs) Explore new pleasure dimensions. (laughs) All right. Thanks, everybody, for showing up and listening to our show. We hope you liked this episode of the Love Lab podcast. If you enjoyed this show, leave a comment and share it with your friends. And if you want more, we have an entire digital library with the best sex tips and relationship advice at CelineRemy.com. That's C-E-L-I-N-E-R-E-M-Y.com. So join us in the sex vault to continue this adventure. Thanks for listening. And remember, you're amazing.